so uh, last topic guys we have covered the gdg topic of base and the generations any questions in them any questions of job j1 j2 step 1 step 2 kind of story guys okay so i'll assume that there are no questions we'll come back to the system anyway so the next topic what i have in theory today guys is about the prop concept yes, yes procedures or simply called props so just go and check your mic guys i see somebody's are not in mic uh, mute please check your mic please uh, just uh, maybe he or she did not notice check your mic guys okay right so the topic what we have is called proc guys jcl procs and very much important every job will use this topic guys and whenever i use a word in our training as a proc guys it is simply again collection of one or more steps one or more steps executed together executed together now this is a way of writing sub program kind of story only guys but uh, not the sub programs uh, part so in here earlier uh, when we told about the exit statement guys i told you couple of syntaxes here exit program equal to name of the program this is one thing you can do on exit statement the other thing that you can tell the system to execute a proc also so in the job guys in the job on an exit statement you may see a pgm parameter executing a single individual program or you may see a proc which is collection of one or more programs itself and here you have the syntax of step 3 guys which you need to remember like this so if you don't see any pgm parameter if you don't see any proc parameter by default guys by default system will consider this as a proc only okay this one will be the syntax what you will be using in the project you will be either writing pgm that is mandatory when you are running a single program or you will be writing the proc keyword if it in a general case but normally we will be writing this syntax guys now in this proc concepts in this proc concept guys there are two specific types there are specific types one is the in stream proc the one is catalog proc okay now again let me help you here this one guys this particular topic is important but not hard guys this particular topic is clearly an important topic which you will be regularly seeing guys okay you will be regularly seeing this topic in your project the only thing here is it's easy to do only proc concept okay if you are learning only proc concept it is very easy guys but under the proc under the proc there are side topics okay that those things will confuse you so in here when i told you two procs guys two types of procs the in stream proc and a catalog proc so what's the primary difference or what is the simple difference here so let's take about the in stream proc now the proc definition okay what are the proc code you want to write the steps guys the proc definition is coded is coded within the job only the proc guys will be coded within the job using proc and append statements using proc and append statements earlier guys we have written a job j1 which contains step 1 step 2 like this we have written in the program but now what i want to do is i want to convert the job into a proc i want to convert this job into a proc so how do i do simply again i write like this job j1 in that you will be having the proc name proc name proc as the statement proc as the statement and within this proc code you will be adding your steps to run what are the steps you want you put them between step 1 step 2 step 3 and and like this procedure end so the proc definition okay this is what we call proc definition guys if it is coded in the job only okay if it is coded in the job only guys then we call it as an in stream proc and catalog proc guys catalog proc is little different which you need to learn this one 
So when I say catalog proc, guys, the proc definition, that means the test steps, guys, what are the steps you want to bind together? The proc definition is coded in a different PDS and 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 using only proc statement, only proc statement. In here, guys, the P end or pend statement, procedure end statement is not used. If it is an in stream proc, you need to use both the statements, proc statement and append statement. If it is a catalog proc, if it is a catalog proc, then you need to use only the proc statement, not the append statement at all. So if you have the same job, if you have this particular same job here, how do you need to code it in the catalog proc? For this, guys, you need to look into three, uh, two PDS, two different PDS. IBM user dot p6 dot joblib. This is one library you need to consider. IBM user dot dot properly. This is second data set. Here you will be having all your jobs, job J1, job J2, all your jobs that you want to add. And in here you will be having your proc guys, where you can write the proc name, give the proc name and proc as a keyword. Within that, you'll be having all the steps. Within that, you'll be having all the steps. So they are separated now. The proc is outside, guys. It is cataloged in another library. If it is within the job only, guys, then it is in stream. If the proc is separately coded outside the job, guys, then it is called a catalog proc. First difference is on the syntax, guys. How to write an in stream proc how to create a catalog proc that's the first difference now what is the second point you need to notice here guys the instinct proc proc can be executed can be executed multiple times okay multiple times but but using the same job it coded in only this job j1 guys can see the proc Okay, only job J1 guys can see the proc. So if you want to execute the proc, you can write some step X exit proc name like this. You can execute and you can execute n number of times as well within the same job from the job single job only guys. You can execute the same proc multiple times. But what is the advantage of using catalog proc guys here? Also, the proc can be executed multiple times can execute multiple times also by any job okay using any job here it can be called by job j1 it can be called by j2 as well so if you want to execute the proc from job j1 guys you're gonna need to write the same thing here step x <coughs> execute proc name job j2 also can call it guys job j2 can also call it Maybe step by exit proc name. But there is one additional thing that you need to learn in the catalog proc. Here, the instinct proc is the job only, guys. The proc is within the job. So when you're executing the proc, system will not need any location description or you don't need to tell where the catalog or the instinct proc is coded. System knows it. <coughs> but if you are using a catalog proc, guys, the libraries are different. You have a job in one data set. You have a proc in one data set. If you ask the system to execute a proc, system needs the location as well. So additional to the convenient of executing by multiple jobs. OK, the convenient is to execute this proc by multiple jobs. But add on statement is we need to code. We need to code the JSL lib statement, the JSL lib statement to tell the location of the proc to tell the location of the proc. We need to code additionally one more statement called JSL lib in the job, not in the proc, in the job that can be helped to tell the location of the proc. What you need to do here is simply add one step here. Just a second, a space gap here. So I just need to tell the system like this. JSL lib. JSL lib 
order equal to don't write dsn guys this is not specifically with the disposition order equal to ibm user dot t6 dot properly this is the syntax guys what you need to tell with calling when you are calling that particular proc if you are calling the proc guys you need to tell the location as well so if you want to tell the location all you need to do is tell by using additional line called jsl lib same thing here also jsl lib here order equal to ibm user dot t6 dot proc when you are calling this proc system will go and check in this library and it finds it and executes these three steps control will come back in a job guys in a job okay in this catalog proc concept in a job you can call multiple procs if you want you can call a job proc and then again you can execute another step of program then also you can execute you can any combinations you can do guys any combinations you can do you can call a proc at step x immediately in step y maybe in step y you can execute some program also if you want so there is no restriction that you should only call the proc okay there is no restriction that a job should only call proc and nothing not just like that wherever you want to execute a proc you can write this syntax in any job you want to execute a program write this syntax two points here okay two points first thing is the in string proc where the definition is within the job the second thing is catalog proc where the definition is in separate data set and second point on the proc here is how do you tell the location so you're going to tell the location by using the jsl lib statement any questions any questions any questions guys come on i don't think that is this topic is that easy we going to try to do it in practical as well we going to try to do it in practical guys uh, we'll take the sps process here okay so this is one we have this one is also we have okay did we create any temporaries yep we created lot of things here so i going to take the help of this one guys to create a pattern here okay some example here jsl lib or right i'm just taking the task jsl1 guys and i'm going to create a new data set for us then i'll show you how we do it in the process so this one rename as uh, jsl job 01 refresh so we have step 1 that is trying to delete a file i'll keep that one here okay so this one i need this one i need rest i don't need so so i have one step one guys which is actually trying to delete the data set so i just need to change the name here change all a to b ibm user dot t6 or t6 dot master here so this is the file which is a and then same thing here change all a with the b ibm user dot t6 dot master uh, new something new. okay so i have the two data sets okay i'm just creating an example i'm just creating an example here this is the one two files okay step one will be deleting the existing files this is my step 1 deleting the existing file step 2 will create a new file for the day and i'm going to take it as the old fellow catalog delete i'm going to use it properly so this one is creating the file by using my data as the sysin part and then in the next step guys in the next step it is acting as an input and creating another output file so let's try to run it for the first time let's see whether it is success or do i need to make any changes it is success let's run again now i have ran two times guys and it is successful but what we are missing is the backups so what i want to do is let's 
get the GDG concept here in this topic first. I want to create a GDG base for this master file. OK, I want to create the backup for master file. So for that we need to create a base. So how do I create a base? Go to 3.2. Go to 3.2. Option B. Option B. And give the name of the base. OK, I'll assume this as the base. So uh, one second, the file might be already there with the same name, right? So the master file I'll delete. If not, the base will get duplicate. OK, the base will get duplicate. So option one on the left side to define option four on the right side to choose the GDG type. OK, define GDG generation data group. So hit enter. You got the GDG name here. The limit is have set to three. I can show you that if I give some 256. OK, I'm trying to create a generation with a limit of 256. Hit enter. It says a decimal between 1 to 255 only. So we know now the base can be created only within the limit of 255. So I'm going to create a generation of three. I told the system as no empty and scratch. OK, this is no empty and scratch. Hit enter. System will generate the code for you guys. System will generate the code. Now if you have access to create this base, simply type execute here and enter. But if you don't have an access here, what you can do is still you can use this code. Copy paste in a ID camps job. OK, let me show you that also. Copy here and show ID camps GD. IBM user X job notify equal to system user ID. Step one, execute my program called ID camps. Sysprint is required for this fellow. This out equal to star under sysin dd star under sysin dd star. You copy paste the code what you got in there and slash star slash slash. Now, now you have the job ready here. So if you don't have access in the project, guys, such job has to be created and this has to be run through a scheduler. So the scheduler will use the application ID which has the access level, guys. So that will create the base. But if you don't think that it's not required for a job, you have access, you can create it directly in the test system. You can use simply exit command and hit enter. You see on the right side, you'll get a message saying that written code zero. So if I go back to 3.4 and choose my T6 here, the master has been created, guys. Okay, what is the difference you should notice? How do I know Anil this is a base? There are so many things. How do I know this is a base? So for a base guys, you will not have any other characteristics, no attributes. There is no volume for it. If I press F11, there is no space allocations. If I press one more F11 here, there is no attributes or nothing. So nothing for a base in here. So by seeing this question mark guys, you can at least know that this is a VSUM file and once you have the base, once you have the base here, I want to create a generation guys. What is the number I should use for creating a generations? What is the number I should be using for creating the generation? Plus guys? One. Simply plus one. So but I have a situation guys. OK, let's try with the basic one. So I'm going to put it here like this. So this is my base. OK, ready to remove this all. Uh, comments make it simple to see. OK, so this is step one and this is step two guys. I'm um, uh, stop the process at step three. OK, I'm not running the step three guys. OK, see this is the end of the JCL. This is the end of the JCL. Step three part I'm not running here for time being. So only one step and I want to create a generation. So what I need to do here is insert plus one. Insert with a plus one here. So let's submit it. So I'm trying to create a generation in one of my steps, guys. Hit enter. Four. It says successful, guys. So our syntax is correct. Is it output also right? So you see this one, the generations. You see the generation, guys. That's what we want. OK, that's what we want here. So I'll remove all these other old files here like this. So you have a base. And you have a generation number one. 
let's try second time. OK, let's try it second time. I don't get duplicate data set issue, so we have solved that problem. And if I refresh the list, I got the generation number two. So you now I have the backups as well. Previous day file is there, current day. So this one, you guys, this one is your current generation. This one is your one day previous generation. Minus one. Submitting again here, submitting again here. And this is for third time, guys. This is for third time. Now this one will be called as your current generation. A minus one generation, a minus two generation. Negatives. Now I'm running for the fourth time, guys. I'm running for the fourth time. And I'm using an option called no empty. OK, limit is three guys. Limit is three. So as you know, if you have a limit of three and if it is going beyond that limit, system will try to delete the generations which are in the list. Now in a no empty case, what happens? Generation one is uh, removed and uh, generation uh, two, three are uh, remaining and four will be added. Right, no empty guys. When I say no empty here, only the oldest one in our case, the generation number one will be deleted and system will still create the generation number. Use the uh, keep it, keep the generation number two, keep the generation number three and creates the generation number four. So F3 and enter. Two, three, four. So whenever you are creating, okay, if I give plus two guys, if I give plus two, will system create one generation, two generations or error? One. Generation will be one guys, but the number will be skipped here guys. If you see the number five got skipped away. The number five got skipped away. Now, now let's bring the step three into picture guys. Now let's bring the step three also. Step one is creating a generation guys. Okay, the previous yesterday question guys. Step one is creating the generation guys. And step two want to use the same generation. Step two want to use the same generation as input. How do I do it guys? What is the number I should give here? Plus one. Plus one? Come on, I want to read the same generation. The generation which is created in the job, right? So it is yes. plus one. Plus one, guys, don't get confused if the interviewer is trying to bluff you. Do not get confused if the interview is trying to bluff you. Your concepts are very clear and I can approve that also for if you have any doubts. So first step, guys, is trying to create a generation. So it is always plus in count. The second step is trying to read the generation. So it will be always plus one as well. Within the job, it will be always plus one only. So now let's run it. Let's run it. It's successful here, but we need to prove whether we have read properly or not. So I'm going to go to the job. I'm going to show you the just messages, guys. I'm going to show you the just system messages here. Step one is an ID cam step. Let it go success. Doesn't bother here. Uh, OK, so still I have one problem, guys. This one has been not removed, so let's delete it and then again run. OK, delete and run. This was stopping the code, right? So I'm, I'm running the same job one more time. OK, I'm running the same job one more time here. In step two, guys, step two, we created a generation number eight. That's what the one which is saying catalog. And in step three, guys, this is my step three here. And you see the last line, it is trying to use the same generation as eight. Previous step created eighth generation, guys, and the next step is also reading the eighth generation. So this is what we call plus one plus one scenario, where you are trying to read the future generation. You are trying to read the future generation. Now let's try to do a mistake here, guys. Let's try to do a mistake here. Submitting the job on the case to a bit. I got a job event guys. I got a job event. So I went into the log. I check this just messages using a find condition code command. Find the condition code command. It says step one is successful. Very good. Step two is successful and notice the generation guys. What happened to the generation? It got cataloged. OK, step two generation guys cataloged here and bottom reach. That means after step three, there is a problem. In step three, we got a failure. 
in step three, which was supposed to use nine has got failed. Now, what are my steps of solution guys? This one is one of my solution. This is one of my solution to correct the mistake. Then what I should do guys? Shall I resubmit from the beginning again? Shall I do no. this? No, you should restart from the step which has failed and uh, you should be using a generation of zero current right. generation. Others guys, listen carefully what we are having here discussing what here happening. So I need to run from step three because in here guys, this is a data processing step, a COBOL program. It did it work and it created the file for the day. You cannot run always from the beginning. I told you you cannot run always from the failed step. Sometimes you need to start from before. Sometimes you should need to start from top. Sometimes you need to run from the field. So current situation guys is to restart from the failed step. Current we are in a situation to restart from the failed step. So I'm telling the system to restart from step three. But if I come down onto the step three, if I come down to see the step three here, it's using a GDG generation of plus one. But but if I go to the 3.4, OK, if I go to 3.4 and check the log, the generation number eight is already here. So this is now the current generation. This is the one we need to read. So what you need to do is change the generation count from plus one to zero zero and then submit. As per the job guys, as per the job setup, Whatever the generation created on the step two today is the one which should be used as input in step three. Generally it was happening successfully. Nothing you have noticed, but today when it failed, step two already created the generation. So that is now referred as current generation. Step three, which you are restarting should also refer to the current generation. If you use plus one guys will get error because you are restarting from here. Plus one with a share will tell you error. So all you need to do is properly give the numbers and submit here. Now I go to the spool. OK, I'll go to the spool and I'm going to verify whether I have used the eighth or ninth generation. See the ninth generation. This is what we want. This is what we want. Any questions here? Any questions here? Now there is one thing I have uh, missed to tell you in the GDG topic okay. in the GDG topic guys. I told you all the job one, two, three, four, but there are one more job set up to do guys. One more to learn easy one. There is a job J6 guys. OK, J6 want to read or access the generations of last three days. Generations of last three days or last seven days, three days. How do I do? Simply write like this DD name DD DSN equal to your base name. OK, your GDG base name. G dot base name in the bracket. You're going to need to write something there. You need three files guys. You need three files. What you have to do here is. This is one way guys. This is option one. OK. This is option one. This is option two guys in option two. I have something like this. Option two I have written like this. You tell me which one is right and what we call this. I need to access three generations guys at once. I need to access three last three days generations here. Will this be the right option to write the syntax or should I write like this? Second option. Second option guys, this is three different DD names, three different files guys. So this is what not the question asked here. In a particular step guys, I want to read all three generations at once. So this one guys, we call it as data set concatenation. OK. All data set concatenation guys in here you will have one DD name with multiple files. Now what are the numbers I should use here guys? 
what are the numbers I should use here? 0 minus 1 minus 2. Always consider guys, your current generation is also one of the backup, one of the past generations. OK, always consider your current generation is also one of the backup. So if you write minus one, two, three, you are actually take mixing the current generations. So you always take current generation also consideration guys. Now in a job J6 is that is the case in job J7 guys. OK, in job J7 I have to access I want to access all generation under a base all generations under a given base it could be one it could be 10 it could be many remember this job j7 also guys okay maybe not asked in an interview I don't know but projectly we will be using regularly guys if I want to access all generation of a base how do you write guys any options without any uh, generation number. Just what you need name. to do guys here is simply base name. If you want to access all the generation guys, only the base name. Don't give any number. Don't use any star kind of syntax guys. You just need to mention the base name only. Automatically system will consider all the generations under the base. That we I missed yesterday. So this is about the GDG topic, guys. Come back to the proc. Come back to the proc. Currently, currently, I have a job, guys. I have a job which is in the sequence of this type. Step one, step two, step three. This is trying to do the ID camps as for our example. This is doing the file program one example as per our code. This is your file program two. So this is the case what I have in my uh, system now. I would like to create an in-stream proc. OK, I should be creating a in-stream proc. So how do I do? Simply create a copy for this fellow. IBM user dot T6J dot job lib. The in proc 01. So I can I talk to the system with a in proc 01. So this is my proc job guys this is my prog job as of now the job contains step one two three what i need to do is put all this step one two three in a proc so start defining a proc so in proc one proc as a statement proc contains steps guys proc contains steps and at the end you're gonna need to write a keyword called procedure end this is the friend operator also known as procedure end Shall I run it guys? Will it go successfully if I do like this? If I do like this, can we execute this proc? No, uh, you need to call that proc. Anyone else? Can we do it successfully guys? We have a job. In the job, I have a created a proc. In the proc, I have one, two, three steps. This is a tested job only guys. We already created this job. We already ran this job successfully guys, but we are not using the proc. Now I have used only the proc here and then I put all the same steps, same files, same delete concept, same GDG concept in a proc and trying to submit it. Got one JSL error guys. We got one JSL error here and I'm going to check what is the reason. I'm going to check what is the reason. Job has no steps. Job has no steps. Of course, the reason is we have not executed the proc only. The proc should be executed, guys. You define the proc, but you did not call the proc. So what you need to do is after the proc definition, after the proc definition, you can call the proc by writing in proc 01. If I write. Now system will gonna be executing. So can I do it? Execute now, guys. Can I execute now? Yes. Okay. Let's try. What happened to other guys? Almost all are silent today. Only one I can hear. So I'm submitting here. I got a JSL error, guys. I got a JSL error. F9. And then I'm going to the system log. 
I'm going to check the system messages. It says that three statement number three. It says in proc 01 is not found. What's the mistake guys? What could be the mistake? What could be the mistake guys? Incorrect proc name. Yeah, it is saying the same thing. What does that mean exactly? JCL lib not mentioned. This is an in string proc, right? For an in stream proc, we don't need to mention a JCL lib. Come on, guys, stick to the concepts. That's the reason why I'm making you to be in this practical. I told you it's important, but doesn't mean that it is so easy, guys. Name of the proc is in proc one, guys, and I'm trying to execute a proc which is in proc zero one. Will it be possible to run it? Obviously, no, guys. So let's correct the mistake and try again. Try again. What do you see? Again, a JSL error. Again, a JSL error. Let's go to the spool log, open this one, and check the mistake here. Now, before you see 7 and 13 line, see the number 3, guys. See and read the statement number 3. It's not error. It's an information. The line number three, what you are seeing here is an information, guys. What it says, it says that the procedure called in proc one was expanded using the in proc in stream procedure definition. Whenever you are using a proc, guys, you'll get this line first. Remember this one. Whenever you are using a proc, you'll get this one as the first line, guys, which will tell you whether you are using an in stream proc or a catalog proc. If you are using a catalog proc, you'll get a message as catalog, guys. If you are using an instinct definition, you'll get instinct. But we are not successful, guys. We are not successful here. We see the line number seven of statement number seven or statement number 13 got a JSL error. Let me go back to just JSL and try to see what is statement number seven. So this is my statement number seven. And this is my statement number 13. Both are related to Sysin, guys. Both are related to Sysin. Like I was mentioning before, prop concept of in stream and catalog, both are simple, guys. Just copy paste only. Developer easily can do that. But after doing that, you'll be ending up with a new knowledge. In here, guys, in the procs, whether it's an in stream proc or a catalog proc, in the proc definitions, in the proc, definition whether it's an in stream proc of the project or a catalog proc of the project guys system dd star is not allowed system dd star is not allowed you cannot use system dd star in the procs as you can notice we have one system dd star here for the input of record you have one more system dd star for the input of id camps these are two wrong statements we have written these are two wrong things we have coded here. Proc do not accept system DD stars, guys. That's the place where the new things will come into concept called control cards. A new word in the JCL, guys, what we call it as control cards. Control cards they are the inputs, guys, are the system inputs. Or I can say this control card is a generally a PDS member, guys. You can use PS also, but PDS members are very famous. So control card is a PDS member which contains which contains the inputs, which contains the inputs. Mostly, mostly the system inputs, system DD star inputs. Now, now let me help you with some terminology, guys. I have a PDS, okay? I have a PDS here, and a PDS contains members. That's what we need to tell in a generic way. In a generic way, guys, PDS always contains members. But, but what we say is component type and component called as. We have a PDS member, guys, which is a COBOL code. Okay, if it is a PDS member is having a COBOL code, then we call it as a program, guys. That's the name we say for the member. If it is a JCL code that you have written there, then it is a job. If it is a layouts, like your file layouts, guys, piece of COBOL code, they are called as copy books. If it is a 
partition code guys you are storing in a pds then we call that as a load module similarly there are other names but as of now if you are having any inputs as this in inputs here we call them as control cards the namings are different guys all you are using is the same pds each pds you are storing different different things now what i want to do is i want to create a control cards i want to create a control card how do i do it not so uh, different guys not so different here you just need another library here you just need another library here input 001 this is very famous guys okay of course i don't need to tell you again and again guys if it is not important i would not train you all these points i can simply complete i can really simply complete the proc concept in next one minute only i can create the catalog proc one minute way and i can complete it but when you go to the project this one minute of story will not help you what you need to know is what is the rest 30 minutes class we have so we know what is a proc and we know there are two types of proc that is not enough what you need to know is if i am a developer in the project if i am coding a proc in the project what are the things i need to be careful about how the system is working what kind of errors will come you will see okay if you know don't know this point you will see the system dd star is perfectly coded you will not see any mistakes there but you will be spending the whole day to understand why there is a mistake in cc in the training system it worked but now it is working here training also it's very simple guys we do it in a very proper way so this one have an input of id camps this is the input now here and input what i have here inputs guys i'll just put them in the pds members what we call this guys what we call this is your control card input 1 input 2 all you have to do here is all you have to do here is wherever you want that code wherever you want that code instead of system dd star you write system dd tsn and mention the library it could be a ps file also sometimes but mostly control cards are used in a pds member so this is your input number 2 so you got very clear point here guys this is a very clear and interesting point to learn you cannot just bluff yourself that you know mainframe directly you see the code getting changed every day yesterday we were using or previous day we are using simply file now yesterday we have used the id camps we have used the temporary ampersand symbol today we have used the ddg now again then we are using control card that is into a proc your concepts are getting higher guys day by day your concepts are adding up so you need to prepare yourself which one will be coming for your intro i don't know but which one is coming to your project i already know what will be used in the project we already know now so i have created the proc of instream when i submitted first time guys it told me that anil your proc is not your job has no steps because i have not called the proc so what i did i added a step now when i submitted next, uh, previously it was saying that you have a jsl error that saying that statement number 7 of cin dd star statement number 13 dd star is error okay i understood in a proc we cannot use cins so i used a cin dd dsn what we call this what we call this is control cards this is a comment guys after one space you can write anything you want that's called comments here control card now let's run it guys let's run it or before i submit any questions before i submit any questions on the instring proc and a control card there are very good benefits in control card guys even though if you are not using okay even though you are not using a proc also guys believe me even though if you are not using a proc also sometimes we put the input in a control card i'll tell you the reason also at anywhere we can call proc yes but after the definition only okay if it is an in stream if it is an in stream 
you can call the proc after the proc is defined anytime anywhere so i'm submitting this i'm submitting this this is a proc example guys we are doing proc example practical using the control card it says successful okay it says successful which shows that you have step x as your step name and then that proc contains step 1 2 3 these are your job steps guys this is your proc steps and if you notice guys if you notice when the job was failing for three times guys we were learning three different points now the job is successful guys we have nothing to learn there is no point to try tell you here guys when it is successful it failed here i told you missed a job call it failed here you gave us mis uh, mistake in the proc name it failed here we learned something called control card but here what point i can train you here guys it failed abandoned here we learned how to restart and how why you need to change the generation number as well many times i told you and again i'm repeating it unless you create errors guys unless you face lot of errors you will not get the experience of fixing it you just learn completed successfully no new knowledge now let's convert this guys let's convert this whole story into catalog proc okay this is an in stream which we don't want to use i want to use a catalog proc so what i do let's separate them let's separate them here this is a proc lib guys okay cat proc one we we'll have one more library created cat proc library in this i will have only the proc statement guys okay cat proc one proc as the keyword i cannot use this one guys okay i don't need to show you again i'm very pretty sure you cannot use this in dd star in any proc so this for id camps and this in dd dsn equal to input to this is equal to share okay the rest everything is same i don't need any pend operator here okay the proc is created guys the proc is perfectly created what i did okay what i did nothing additional guys nothing additional new things i did earlier my job was like this containing one two three now what i did i moved these three steps into a proc like this separately as it is guys this notepad whatever i do in the project uh, in the training system also i'm doing the same thing now i need to do this part i need to call the proc okay the call the proc so go here show cat proc one step one of so ibm user x job notify me system user id and step x execute proc equal to or simply write cat proc one can i do like this guys let's see can i do like this come on guys you no, can't be silent yes, also. Yes. the jcl lib no, no, jcl lib you need to okay so let me add one knowledge point to you let me add one knowledge point to you regarding the catalog pros okay uh, this is the place where i told you right this is the place where i told you that to write a jcl lib statement but i gonna write another line for you if if the jcl lib is not coded okay if the jcl lib is not coded guys by default okay there is a default story here by default system will look in a library called sys1.proxy by default guys will go and check in this proxy if found okay if found execute if not found then you will be looking into the error if not found okay not found then you will be getting the error guys so remember this fellow in one of my project guys in one of my project we used to use this library only to store of course they have created some defaults like so we don't have any jsl lib in one of my project guys when i was also like you are expecting jsl lib 
when I was like a junior there in that project, when I was looking into a prop for the uh, times, I was expecting a JSL lib, but I noticed they are not using JSL lib. So we submit here. OK, we submit here. What an error. Let it be. Let it be. That's not the point here. What's interesting here is the just messages. Now here what you see guys. What do you see here? It's not found anywhere. OK, it's not found anywhere, but but let me do one thing here. This one dot properly. OK, this one dot properly. So cat proc one. OK, cat proc one and then I write step one execute program equal to program equal to add and PG. OK, you can see this magic. OK. Need to learn a lot of things, guys. Your fingers and your thinking should um, uh, touch everything at once. So I'm going to submit it now. I'm going to submit it here. You see that, Abed? You know this reason, okay? You know this reason. What I want to prove here is what I want to prove here, guys. Uh, come on, go to the spool. Go to the spool. Question mark. Here, here. Look at the statement number three, guys. Abend is not my interesting. So the cat proc was expanded. Cat proc was expanded using the system library. By default, guys, it will go and check that fellow. By default, I did not mention. OK, you see our job. I have not mentioned here, guys, where the proc is there. So by default, system will go and look there. But if at all, I want to tell the system. OK, if at all, I want to tell the system from where it has to pick up. From where it has to pick up for this guys for this what you need to do is use the JSL lib. Don't give any name here. Not required. This is a statement guys. This is not DD name. DD names will be coming on the left side. Job names come on the left side. Step name come on the left side, but you have a middle means they are statements. Job statement, exit statement, proc statement, JSL lib statement order equal to. IBM user dot T6 day dot proc lib. Now your code looks perfect for you to understand. Let's run this one here. Let's run this one here. It says successful. OK, that's a bad thing. It's successful is the bad thing in our story. I can't help. What can I do it on time? I should show you the success. So you see the execution pattern is same as per the instant proc or the catalog proc. The pattern is same, but one message I'm going to show you one other message. So if you see this statement here, guys, it is expanded with your private library. So there are two libraries what we call here a system library, which is a default sys1.proclib a and b. And then you have a private library, which is yours. A private library, which is yours. Now, let me go back to the notepad one more time. Let me recollect you this point what I'm trying to train you. This is a topic of procedure, guys. OK, and and it's important. Maybe as in interview or not, I don't know. Maybe someone will come and ask you in interview or not. I don't know really. I don't care about that. What I'm very much interested is in my projects, whatever I did. Extensively, I worked in multiple application guys. I was not in one project at a time, always in the same project. I was in multiple applications every here and there, every six months to one year guys, whenever OK, my project or my managers who actually know me to the head level who knows my name. Actually, any critical project they find any place they see there is a requirement of handling the customers or handling the uh, technology of mainframe or to handle a critical system. They will pull me directly. They don't even ask me Anil, do you want to change the project or not? They simply convey the messages between the managers or the head person who is responsible and they directly shift me in between only. Like for example, one month, like almost one and a half month, I was in another application. Now I'm in another application. Two days back, I was having another call with one of my transition manager asking to move to another application. It happens for me, but whenever I move to the application, guys, I will notice what is the new things there. Technically any difference is there. But I also see what are the common things which I need to put it in my training. 
So prop is one of the common thing to have. Every project, every application, every bad job will have this. There are so many examples I can tell you and you can agree with that also. Now, whenever you're learning as a bookish point of proc, you can learn only two things. One is in-stream, one is catalog. In that, if you're writing in-stream proc in this way, you can call it from this particular job itself. If you're using a catalog proc, then you can code in this particular way and called by any job. There's the two points that you will learn on a proc. But while you're coding a proc, you'll find the errors of the system first. So where you need to go and solve by using control card. Now, now any questions still so far? The topic is not completed, guys. We just started actually. The bookish points, these are still bookish point, guys. In actual project, we use only catalog, right? Uh, mostly. Only Most, yes, I would agree. Mostly, guys, you'll be using catalog props only. So little bit focus on that would be better. Instream procs are very rare, guys. Some old project or old may be there, but don't worry about that. Any other question, guys? Okay, so let's see the beauty of my training. What we've seen is the beauty of simple part. Let's see the beauty of production part. Now, now, Include statements not yet will not come to this. Generally include statements will come when you are dealing with the uh, external general what you say. Uh, the scheduler tool concepts also, but for now we are not using any include or percentage include statements. We'll use little bit only. So but anyway, I'm very interested to show something else guys. My mind is in something else. So on a day guys on a day. When I'm in support, OK, on a day. When I'm in support, guys, I got to see a job event. OK, reality. Let's go with reality of the situation. Now, as a job event has come, what we do generally we will go to the scheduler tools. We'll go to the spool. OK, we'll also go to scheduler tool, guys, okay, to see how many jobs are waiting. In a job log, OK, in a job log in the spool, when you open the event job, guys, you can tell at least how many steps ran, how many steps are waiting. That is only one part of the piece case. What we also do here is we'll go to the scheduler tool and we'll check. We check whether it is only one job is in the cycle or there are bunch of jobs that are waiting. So we will see the importance. So as of now, let's go to the spool. OK, as of now, let's go to the spool. This is the one which I should open. And I noticed guys and I noticed here that step two is the one causing the problem. OK, how I know? This fellow, the dump fellow will come to the abend steps only. Step one was successful. Step two is the one which got abend. Or I can go back here. Okay, if I'm not noticing this one properly, I can go to this just log and I can find the condition code. Step one is successful and I can see below here only there is an error. What is the error we got here, guys? What is the error we got in step two? It says that a space a bend. It says as a space a bend. So why we got a space a bend? Then what is the reason? So this is a particular DD name. This is the file which got the space a bend. So what is the general solution for space a bend, guys? What is the general solution for a space a bend? Come on, guys. I know almost everybody knows. Increase the primary and secondary quantities. In space. space and restart. That's what we say, right? So let's try to go and increase the space. OK, we are using the proc concept, guys. OK, we are not using the uh, job concept. We are running the proc concept of catalog. So this is the place. OK, it says the error. OK, let me go to the spool M5 ST in my system. Question mark. And if I notice it, the message says that Anil, you got a space abend in a job of step two of a DD name as master DD01. So this is the step two master DD01, which is a new generation. This is the space what they have. So what is the solution I should give here, guys? What is the solution we should give here? How much I should increase? Come on, guys, do be fast. 
we are already time out of time. Unit, you can change it to cylinder. The basic solution, okay, assume this is not one comma one guys. Okay, we are still in training, so we are using one comma one. In the project, generally you may have 50 or 100 like that guys. So basically if it is 50 or 100 also not, generally change to cylinders and go away. So now I want to increase the space guys. Okay, let's change to cylinders. Okay, we'll try to change the cylinders and run it. Hey, what happening here? Not able to edit it here. What could be the reason, guys? Browse mode. You are in browse yeah, mode. Browse. Edit. You should, you should edit it. Do you really think that Anil doesn't know that this is a browse mode? Guys, do you really think that this is the Anil who is doing a mistake in browse mode? I want little bit fast and little bit far beyond thinking guys. Any, anybody can do any mistake. No, Anil. If the yeah, concentration anybody can do any mistake, but do you really think that Anil doesn't know browse mode or edit mode? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Come on guys, I want better answer than this. You are in school? No. No. Come on. You can see me. You can see the library where I am. Anyone? I'm not able to edit this one guys. No, the question is not so clear, uh, Anil. Uh, can you give some detail? Uh, see, I have a, I have a data set. I'm opening it in browse mode. Mm -hmm. So in browse mode, I cannot do it. Either I have to do it in view mode or edit. View mode means we need to have some other X command or something yep. to, you know, do it we save or something like that. So, uh, in, inside this, what is that you are lo looking for? I'm looking something else. Whatever you told is right. Like we are in the browse mode. We cannot edit. We can go in view mode. We can edit. We can go to edit mode. Yeah. We can edit. But that's not it's the point. It's a GDG. Yes. It's not PS. Uh, we cannot change it directly. Nope. Not that one. Point here, guys. Point here is the story started. I'm a production support guy. I'm not a developer, guys. I'm not a testing person here and and the hidden secret here is this is not my personal library where I can go and edit anything what I want. This is not my okay, personal thanks. library. What is this? This is the production libraries. These are called production libraries. Can I edit it guys? No, you cannot. No. Can we really edit a production library like we do it in testing? Uh, no. no. That's the question actually. That is the reason why I'm not able to edit this data set guys. But what is my solution? Solution is to increase the space and restart. OK, I'm not able to edit it. Keep this point in the notes. OK. Keep this point in the notes. In the project, whether you are in a production support or a developer or anyone you are, anyone you are, we do not have access to edit a proc. We have to edit. Well, tell, tell me one thing. Uh, see, level one support uh, uh, in one of my projects earlier, level one support is done by a different organization. So I think even those guys will not have uh, this kind of access. Level one are more least people. Okay. Level one are the uh, operators, operation teams. Like you can assume as they are the least level access pre uh, preferred. Level two or L2. L2 are the application support people like me. L3 is your client uh, IT team who are more second level. More than me. So L1 people or L2 people or even L3 people. We will never provide a production edit access. What if 
what if the L1 person had got angry with the project and deleted everything and left the company next day? Or the L2 people got irritated with the project and deleted everything and left over? We will not provide any taxes to the production libraries. Full stop. That's the end of the story. Now, second part. Let's assume, okay? This is an assumption, guys. We increase the space, okay? The assumption is we increase the space and I want to now restart the job from the failed step. I want to restart the job from the failed step. Step two, step one is successful, right? I want to write a restart syntax here. And I'm not able to edit it. What is the reason, guys? Am I still in the browse mode? No, you are in fraud library. That's the answer, guys. That is the answer. We need do not have access to the edit a production jobs, but we have to edit it. Now assume, okay, assume still assumption only, guys. Still assumption only. You have restart access. Okay, you have edit access, not restart access. Edit access, and you want to restart from particular step. Okay, restart from a particular step. I'll explain this later. We don't have time. So now I'm able to edit it. Okay, I'm gonna run it. For example, just an example, guys. This is assumption only. Still, I'm trying to run it, guys. And I got an append again. I know already. The job started from step two. That is fantastic, guys. The job started from job two. Again, it failed with the space append. What is the solution when you get the space append for second time, guys? What is the step you should be doing? What is the solution when you got a space append for second time, guys? First time it is primary solution you give. Second time, guys, what I should do? Increase the primary and secondary quantities. That was the previous solution, right? Uh, That's what I did from 1 comma 1. I have increased to 2 comma 2 and I have submitted it. Report the problem. You need to point the problem now, guys. You need to analyze. Second time is the dangerous thing. Don't go blindly again by restarting it with 3 and 3, 4 and 4 or 100 and 100, guys. Don't do that. In our analysis, assumption guys, still the assumption part. Okay. In our analysis, we found we found that the data is having wrong. Okay. The data is wrong. That's causing the loop or that's causing the issue and it is causing the problem. So I want to correct this data, guys. I want to correct this data and I'm not able to do it. I'm going to write the third point, guys. We do not have access to edit a production data set. But we have to. That's the topic, guys. That's your topic. Production events. What you have seen till now is a developer who has edited the jobs and created the proc and everything, guys. GDG is a developer story. He created it. Everything is fine. But when it comes to production, guys, the situation changes. The environment change. The access will change. The content will change and the methods will change. How do I do it? In the project, if, without knowing this, guys, without knowing this, you go and do any production job. Edit and try to run it. The next minute you will notice yourself that you are in a wrong knowledge step. You are in a wrong knowledge book only because you are knowing that increasing the space will solve the problem, but you missed how to do it. Like you enter into that uh, what you call. Uh, come on, yeah. what is that? Arjun has entered into one of the circle, right? That circle you have entered into. That is the circle where you Arjun, not Arjun, everyone knew. That's what you entered into, guys, without knowing this part. 
this is your last part. OK, this is the yeah, Padma view, right? That is what happens when you go into production without knowing these things. You just know how to fight doesn't make any sense there when you don't know how to go into the trick. So tomorrow's class will complete this topic and we'll go back to utilities guys. We are not completed utilities. We are just touching here and there one of the utility. The story is about the rest of the topics. We still have one of the utility called sort there which I need to explain. So that I'll be doing anyway. But before that you need to learn how to edit the production data sets. Could be a job, could be a proc or could be a data set of the data itself. So that we'll see tomorrow guys. Any questions quickly? We have not much time, not much time actually. Any questions?